Sure, happy to tell you that. So we take people's cognitive and emotional traits and use that to match them to their ideal role rather than looking at their resume, which can often lead to a biased and oftentimes not predictive outcome for the candidate. So how do you determine their cognitive and emotional traits? Yeah, sure. So I spent 10 years at Harvard and MIT as a cognitive neuroscientist. Cognitive neuroscientists around the globe have developed a series of computer activities that can tell you things about your memory, your attention, your sequencing, your risk profile, your reward sensitivity, all sorts of cognitive and emotional facets of people. And instead of using somebody's resume to predict their success in a role, we look at sort of more fundamental traits. So instead of judging a book by its cover, which would be the resume, we look more deeply inside of them. So would this be good enough in your view to replace an in-person interview? So we don't replace any human to human uh, contact. What we do is replace the process of a person scanning a resume, which we know from all the countless studies that have been done on it, to be highly biased. So I always say if you want to make a racist, sexist, elitist, or ageist decision, use a resume because unfortunately that's what all the studies show. So we don't replace any humans or human to human interaction. We are just shortlisting candidates for um, recruiters to look more closely at rather than having them go through the sort of manual repetitive review of a resume, which, you know, quite frankly is, you know, not the most exciting part of their job and really not where they outperform. So now I understand the goal is to take the bias out of the process, yep. but algorithms are always biased based on the biases of their creators, mm -hmm. right? And so how can you be sure you're not introducing new kinds of bias? So let's say, for example, you know, in the 60s and 70s, when they were looking for, for tech talent to join the exploding technology industry, they did a lot of aptitude tests and personality mm -hmm. tests, yep. which, to be fair, eliminated a lot of people who didn't fit into the sort of white male sure. nerd engineer stereotype? Yeah, so that's a great question. So the way that we do it, so I would I would say that it's not always the case that AI has to be biased. Um, AI can be biased. It can also be unbiased. It really depends on the creator of the technology and what they do to prevent those biases. So what we propose and what we've open sourced on GitHub is a way to audit any algorithm to see if it is biased for Caucasians or biased for males. And if we see that, we will actually tweak the algorithms so that they no longer show that and that they are producing a fair outcome for men and women and people of different ethnic backgrounds, not to mention people of different socioeconomic backgrounds and others. So it's really all in the design. Technology is neutral. It's how you design it. And you can actually remove bias from an algorithm. It's impossible to remove bias from a human. So I actually think we have more hope in removing bias from technology if we use open sourced audited methods, which we do.